Welcome to the World of Horror Foundations podcast. I'm Mom, aka Christina, and this is the podcast where I take a tour of classic international horror. On the main pod, Mac and I choose a genre or subgenre of horror and pair an international film with an American one. With these minis, I want to fill in the gaps of my own knowledge and find those foundational films that have influenced and inspired modern horror. The only rules for this project is that the movie has to have been made before the year 2000, and it must not have been made in the U.S. The topic for today is Mario Bava's Shock from 1977. Fair warning, I am going to spoil plot points and the ending of this movie. In terms of the man, he was born July 31st, 1914 in San Remo, Italy, and died April 26, 1980 in Rome, Italy, of a heart attack. He has 79 credits from 1939 to 1977, and he directed 24 films. So the rest of those credits are for cinematography. His movies include Black Sabbath slash I Tre Volti della Paura, Operazione Paura Kill Baby Kill, Sedone per l'Assassino, Blood and Black Lace, and Reazione a Catena, which is Bay of Blood from 1971. I do recommend the Mario Bava doc, which is on YouTube, called Maestro of the Macabre. His father, Eugenio Bava, was a cinematographer, and his son, Lamberto, is also a film and TV director. In fact, Bava's son, Lamberto, who had been his assistant director for several years, actually wrote Shock and convinced Bava to work on it. Bava storyboarded the entire film, but he directed only parts of it. He feigned illness to help Lamberto gain some directorial experience, which I think is very sweet. So the short synopsis of the movie, sometimes spelled S-H-O-C-K, sometimes spelled S-C-H-O-C-K, and sometimes titled Beyond the Door 2, focuses on a woman who moves into the home she shared with her deceased former husband, where she finds herself tormented by supernatural occurrences. As I said, in the United States, the film was released under the title Beyond the Door 2, as an unofficial sequel to Beyond the Door from 1974, but from what I can tell, the only connective tissue is the boy, David Collin Jr., who appears in both films. This film was directed by Mario Bava. The screenplay was by Lamberto Bava, Francesco Barbieri, Alessandro Parenzo, and Dardano Sacchetti. It starred Daria Nicolodi, John Steiner, David Collin Jr., and Ivan Rasimov. Mario Baba is also credited for cinematography on this film, along with Alberto Spagnoli. It was released August 12, 1977, and it has a running time of 95 minutes. Well, <laughs> in terms of this plot, this may be a haunted house movie, or a woman losing her mind movie, or a possessed kid movie, um, or all of those things could be happening all at once. Dora, her son Marco, and her husband Bruno move into the house where Dora had lived with her first husband, Carlo. Carlo was a heroin addict, and it's thought that he killed himself. Bruno is away a lot now, as he is a commercial pilot. After Carlo killed himself, Dora was institutionalized and given electroshock therapy. So I'm not sure if that's where the title comes from, but it might be. One question that is unanswered for me as a mother is, um, where was the baby <laughs> when she was institutionalized? I don't think that's ever answered. And I don't think she seems to have any family at this point in time. The kid acts pretty weird. He spies on her in the shower he cuts up some of her underwear, and he becomes preternaturally angry when he sees his mom being affectionate toward Bruno. The shrink thinks that maybe Dora is projecting anger and resentment onto the child, and I guess that makes a sort of sense, except that the kid also does things like wrestle with her, hold her wrist down, and dry humps her. So 
that suggests that maybe he is actually possessed by the ghost of his dead father. But it's left a little bit ambiguous until the very end. There is a revelation which leads to more bloodshed, including Dora killing Bruno with an axe and then uh, taking her own life. And so the last shot is Marco outside having a tea party, seemingly with his invisible ghost of a dad on the front lawn. The really famous shot of the child running down the hallway and transforming into Bruno is incredible. I had heard about it online, but when I saw it myself, I was really uh, impressed. You can find it online in gift form, but I would recommend watching it in the context of the movie for full emotional impact. There was also another shot that I was impressed by. It startled me. I think I actually gasped out loud alone in my house, (laughs) but it's when Dora trips over a rake in her yard. The teeth cut her, and then when she looks down at the wound, she sees her husband corp her husband's corpse hand like grabbing at her from the ground. It was pretty disturbing and great. Baba's first film, Black Sunday, has been cited as an influence by Quentin Tarantino, Francis Ford Coppola, Tim Burton, and Joe Dante, at least. His movie Bay of Blood slash La Bay Sagliante, Carnage twitch of the death nerve is widely considered to be a direct influence on Friday the 13th part two. Ryan Lambie at the Den of Geek also points out that Baba influenced several U.S. slashers such as Halloween, Friday the 13th, The Burning, Scream, and I Know What You Did Last Summer. Mario Baba's first film, The Girl Who Knew Too Much, was released in 1963 and many credit it as the first Jalo film. So Jalo is a genre of horror that originated in Italy in the 1960s and 1970s. And it has a number of elements that are common to a lot of Jolly, such as the identity of the killer not being known or the, even the, the face of the killer being obscured. Um, seeing things from the killer's point of view, having like really incredible kills, creative kills, and the deaths being presented as almost art pieces. Sometimes the killer is in a trench coat and a hat and gloves. And to me, seems to bridge the gap between noir and slashers. And I read somewhere that when it gets too slashery, it might not be considered a pure Giallo anymore. And Giallo just means yellow in Italian. And the plural for Giallo is jolly. Just like, you know, think spaghetti is the plural of what spaghetto. But yeah, Giallo just means yellow. And the reason these films are called that is in the late 1920s, there were a series of crime novels and they all had yellow covers and they were sort of equivalent to our pulp fiction. So they were sort of considered lurid and um, trashy, maybe, but they were extremely popular. And so when this genre of film came along, it just took that name. This movie, Shock, I would not consider to be a Jalo film. It's more just a thriller. And um, I would, though, um, recommend it. It has a lot of things to recommend it. Daria Nicolodi's performance is great. She's really fun to watch. There are some startling scenes and I mean the creep factor of the kid is right up there and the incestuous suggestions are are pretty disturbing. Um, I mean also the suggestion that the father would possess his own son (laughs) is disturbing to me. You know it has a good pace and I, I really enjoyed it a lot. I know it's not everyone's favorite and some people complain about the soundtrack and some people complain about the little boy, but um, I don't have any complaints. I thought it was really an entertaining film. In Mario Bava's own words, he said, movies are a magician's forge. They allow you to build a story with your hands. And I love that statement. I think that is just really beautiful. He also said, what attracts me in movies is to be presented with a problem and be able to solve it. I think it's very clear that his influence 
is uh, vast and that he's a really influential director. I can't wait to catch up on more of the man's catalog so I can celebrate it. And um, I'd really love to hear from you about what your favorite Bava film is and if you have any recommendations. Well, Hose, thanks so much for tuning into this podcast and for all your support. We really appreciate it. It does indeed mean the world of horror to us truly. We've got some really interesting things coming up on the podcast. Very soon, we're going to have on the main podcast, Max is going to join me and we're going to be talking about haunted houses with the house at the end of time from Venezuela and Beetlejuice from the U.S. So that should be great. And in terms of minis, I do have a couple of Jolly on deck. I think Tenebrae and maybe Deep Red. I'm not sure, but I know I also want to do um, Vampire, the Theodore Dreyer film from 1932 with Devin DiMattia. And there's a movie from the 90s called Tacy's from Spain. Um, that will probably be a solo mini. So thanks so much for joining us. And remember, we love you. And don't go into the basement. <laughs>